Once I reach a thousand subscribers, I will always have a live chat on the first Friday of the month at 8 p.m. So please subscribe, click on the bell, and let's get a thousand subscribers very soon. Good morning and welcome back to Planet Old History. Today we are again going to discuss what if the Spanish Civil War never happened. This time we will try to get a republic in Spain without Franco or the Falange. They will not just disappear, but the Spanish government will be able to hold everything much better. According to some sources, the leadership didn't pay attention to the warnings of high-ranking generals who were plotting a coup. Instead of not paying attention, we would have a more paranoid reaction where the government would act quickly and arrest many of the leaders who were plotting or not. You see, in here we will have a similar reaction as in the other scenario. Once you start arresting people and torturing them, where do you stop? That's how the government might get more paranoid and that's also how there would be more anti-nationalist or anti-conservative momentum within the Spanish Republic. And I'm not going to say that Spain will become full-blown communist immediately, but they will definitely be more left-wing and this will open up some more opportunities for people who were in the extreme left or who were just communists. This would have some effects to Spain as a whole. First of all, the different regions of Spain would see the right moment to negotiate some autonomy and I think that the Basque and the Catalonians would be able to get some autonomy. But instead of appeasing the population, we would still find ourselves in a situation where the political factions would get more extreme and some factions would ask for independence. Therefore, the Basque country and Catalonia would still be problematic regions for Spain. But there won't be a reign of terror, but we would get really close to it. Strikes and revolts will happen. The Spanish right will still be very unsatisfied, but we won't have a Spanish civil war. What will happen during World War II? I believe there are three different outcomes. Let's discuss the first option. The most boring outcome might be that Spain will just do nothing and export less to the Axis and be less sympathetic towards the Axis. Portugal would be more likely to be openly allied with Britain and the Allies and we would have a faster win of the Allies probably for some days or even weeks. But nothing too crazy will happen. After World War II, Spain would be in a similar position as Italy after World War II in terms of economic strength and political scene. Another outcome is that if the Nazis would be bothered by Spain, for some reason, they could just invade Spain and they would probably find the support of some collaborators. Spain would be overwhelmed but have a good defense in the mountainous areas. We have the Pyrenees and also the inner mountains which would serve as very good defenses. But even so, the Germans would easily win against them and Italy might get the control over the Balearic Islands. The Spanish government would go to the Canary Islands into exile and now the pressure for Portugal would increase dramatically. If the Nazis would not be able to make a deal with Salazar, he would escape to the Azores, while mainland Portugal would get occupied by the Nazis. It is possible that Portugal and Iberia could be merged into one country, but there would be no reason for that and the Nazis if they would like to do it, they would just do it, but it would be a very unstable entity. This will handicap the Brits enormously. Getting Spain means that the Germans will get Gibraltar as well, and this will be good for Italy. More soldiers can be drawn to the Eastern Front against the Soviets, but this will not make a huge difference. All in all, there is a possibility that if the resources are wasted, the Germans might lose the war around the same time, even a bit earlier, 
but if they are able to do everything more wisely they could win some more months up to two years and Italy could even peace out without getting too much damage and yet again become the sole surviving fascist dictatorship in Europe as I discussed in my other scenario. Salazar and the Spanish government would return from exile and Salazar would try to distance himself very openly from national socialism but not give up on his rule, obviously. The colonies would rebel much faster or already have rebelled and if Salazar would fail to manage to get the colonies back into control he would retire and Portugal would reform way quicker into democracy. But I don't think that Salazar would get really hardly punished or there would be no death penalty because he was still quite popular but if he would not be able to get the colonies he would just see for himself that he is unable to do something and he would just retire on his own. The politics in Portugal would be less leftist because there would be no carnation revolution. Spain would never become a monarchy and have more time to evolve economically. But seeing how European countries in the south fare worse than the northern counterparts, I believe that Spain could be in a similar position as in OTL, perhaps slightly better. The only difference might be that there would be less terrorism from the ETA, as the Basque were more free and more emancipated, but that doesn't mean that we would not see revolts or more outspoken Basque or Catalonian nationalists and in this timeline this type of nationalism might be more from the right than the left, as it is in OTL. The third outcome is the less likely one, but it could still happen. Spanish government could fear the right so much that at one point the communists would also be part of the government and we would see an approachment between Spain and the USSR. With the Barbarossa plan being executed, Spain would join the war against the Axis, and they would, together with the French resistance, break the Nazis after a lot of fighting. Portugal would be able to openly support the UK as well, and this would be some help yet again. The Nazis were too overstretched at this point, and yes, they could win many battles initially, but it would never be possible for the Nazis to beat the Soviets with Spain and getting a faster invasion of Britain against Italy, leaving Germany all alone with some collaborators. They would still try to save Mussolini and do most of the things they did in OTL, but this time, even without the US, Germany would still be beaten. The political climate would be a very different one. Yes, the map might actually look similar as it did in OTL, and actually without the US, check the Morgenthau plan, I made a video about it. Chances are that the borders, as they were done in OTL, would not really be questioned in this alternate timeline. But Europe would be a different place. I think that the communists could have a longer influence in most of Western Europe, or at least make some more countries more friendly towards communism. Britain and Portugal would be politically isolated, while Italy, France, West Germany and pretty much all of Western Europe would be somewhere in the middle initially. The Stalin notes would be sent to the Brits and the French, and having a pro-Soviet ally in Spain, we could see an independent Germany forming. It could be an ally of Finland, Yugoslavia and Austria and become part of the Third World or the non-allied movement because the Third World is initially a synonym of the non-allied movement. At some point Spain would obviously not support the Soviets anymore and we could see a Spanish-Soviet split after or before a Sino-Soviet split. This Spain would probably be able to influence Portugal and turn it into some type of, let's say, less than a satellite state, forcing it to give up its colonies, and there would also still be the pressure of the US. Andorra too would fall in the influence of Spain, because one of the rulers is the co-prince of Andorra, so instead of having the priest of uh, Ergal or Urgal, 
I think it's called, it, the area of Orgel. Instead of having the priest in there, we could maybe have the secretary of the party or a president of some party who would then be the co-prince. But, well, that's, again, a very difficult uh, thing to decide because the title of prince might also be too ancient or too antique for the communists or the left uh, parties in Spain. So we might see something interesting with Andorra, but it would still become some type of satellite state or at least be in the influence of Spain. And France might also become more left-wing communist and cooperate even with Spain because in OCL the Communist Party had a huge success in France and without the influence of the US, well, we might have a stronger Communist Party in there. Italy might be at first be on good terms with the Soviets up until the intervention in Hungary or Czechoslovakia. At this point, these countries... France, Italy, uh, Spain, even Portugal, they could develop the concept of Euro-communism and be open to trade with the US, just as China. It is possible that the Euro-communist countries would develop good relations with China, while the Soviet sphere of influence would crack in a similar way as it did in OTI. Euro-communism would prevail after the fall of the Soviet Union, which might be delayed for a few more years. But the former satellite states of the USSR would probably get a lot earlier leaders further to the right than even Orban, Putin or Erdogan. These countries would see themselves as the free Europe, and we might get a continuation of the Cold War, but especially on European soil. Euro-communist countries supported by China and the former satellite states, which might again find an ally in Russia, but also in the US and Britain. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. Be sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, support me also on Patreon and join my forum, forum.planetalthistory.ga. Until next time, on Planet Alt History.